Hi there, how's it in the name of Christ? How are you doing? Uh, it's your girl Cranky Gikarabo. I hope you're good. I hope you're peachy. I hope you're Stella. And I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, hey, let's celebrate my hair. She's growing. If you're not feeling good, welcome to the party. Really and truly, everybody is feeling trashy. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, so it is the 22nd of February, 2024. It's a strange year. A strange day during a strange time with strange things happening in a strange way. But it doesn't matter. Because we are experts in strange. What? We are experts in strange. Nah, we're not. But we try to be. But guess who's an expert in strange? The god of the universe. And he is not buying Eskilem. Hey, Batong. Whatever is going on with my hair, I always try to get it looking a little bit better when I come here. And then I'm in here, and then it just slaps me like a bad man. It just slaps me like a gender-based violence guy, you know? It comes out with a flying kick, an axe, a machete, chainsaw, and a gun. And I have to run. Uh like half the time i survive you know but now i'm not surviving it's like ha huh, dreadlocks is that what we're doing looking like we got some dreads at you in these streets got it in us the month dreadlocks 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 okay i'm kidding don't know how this is gonna work oh that looked like it could be cute if i did oh no what i do what i do oh no oh you know what the book of revelation just needs to unfold on the earth already because i'm no longer trying to grow my hair uh liar liar pants on fire oh sit on a telephone wire Ugh. anywho anyhow uh i'm trying to make this hair do everything that i desire that it should do but it's just like mm, uh, whatever you know what guys no let me just be cool calm collected and then a bunch a neat one and sophisticated with my fan and leave the hair alone uh. oops i'm sorry i do apologize did it was i rude um, i don't have decorum because i'm suffering anyway so did i mention that it's the 22nd of february 2024 if i didn't uh maybe i started recording again i don't know people are just trying to give me sickle cell anemia anemia leukemia i don't know like a disease or or, or or we're just gonna move on it's the 22nd of february it's it's the birthday of some guy i used to date and i'm like <laughs> yeah nah. how life sucks that you have to remember i'm a birthday of like whole entire sorcerers so i did not sign up for that and my little wannabe plats back there also growing you know i promise you my hair looks so much better off camera yo because when I, I i did it like in front of the mirror i was like ready to record now i feel like i look like a dumbo Dumbo lemon nachi ungoods nachi ungoods uh okay just in case you're wondering that's an advert from back in the day in south africa the old swords then a link or she fella don't even know what that's about anyway look guys you know what nothing matters uh it appears nothing matters nothing matters like the stock exchange people are exchanging each other and i'm like mm -mm 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 -mm. we are human and people are living dangerous uh anyway whatever you know what y'all i mm. i'm sorry for that little thunderous earthquake 22nd of february 2024 it's a strange day I wasn't able to sleep last night because I am always, always, always just so dissatisfied with something whenever I start recording. Man, oh man, oh man, oh man, I'm feeling unhappy. I think I just added a little bit of spunk, Eiffel Tower, whoo! Anyway, my money's gone, I'm all alone, too much to see. We're not doing this. Please kindly, kindly look out for my caveats there. No, sorry. Look, these are my ca- <sighs> It's the heat. And it's the fact that I live in a deadbeat country. Okay, let's start that again. Captions. Please look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. Sometimes they use a small g for God. They are sometimes misspelled. They sometimes live in another planet. Sometimes they convulse on the floor with an epileptic fit. And I don't really know what to do about that. I don't have a life. I don't have money, I don't have a career, I don't have people. So I can't edit them because there's no incentive. 
on the day when I have a thousand seven hundred subscribers no no way on the day when I have five thousand subscribers no that's a little bit unfair on the day when I have two thousand five hundred subscribers I'll edit my captions I think that's fair I mean when you've got five thousand subscribers it's just so irresponsible to keep them looking nasty but for now I only have like five or seven people watching me so for those reasons guys just hold on with me I promise this is going somewhere actually I, I can't really promise anything only God does that so pray for me to finally start editing my captions <laughs> mm. okay mm. oh yeah I may or may not be wearing application makeup if I am you're gonna know I'm not shape-shifting I promise it's just this app makeup it falls off and then comes back on again it's like a whole thing okay uh, what else shall we put out there I have a white cast sunscreen, can you see? But people are like, see the water in my eye. I'm like, okay, I don't wanna, it's okay. I really don't wanna see the worry in your eye. It's nasty anyway. It's an evil eye, it's like the eye of Horus. Anyway, cool beans and bananas. Uh, what else? Oh, I have a segment. I'm only human after all. 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 Don't be taking no jabs at me. Essentially, what I'm doing here is showing you that when you prick me, I bleed. So please, like, don't do it. Uh, but then again, people are doing it. So. <laughs> Eventually, there's gonna be a flying kick coming from out of the screen. It's gonna be 3D printed. So it's definitely going to be able to create some damage. And people then gonna know when to respect the person. R E S P E C T. Find out what it means to me. I'm in. Mm, yeah. I was supposed to blush my cheeks. Did it happen? Some days it works. Other days it doesn't. Like, you know what? Like, everything like proper. This, uh, like, it, it's just, it's not okay that I have to get. Uh, that I have to keep doing this but anyway whatever that the whole point over there was to show that if, if you prick me I end up bleeding and stuff there anyway yeah so guys last night I couldn't sleep last night no we're not singing today I couldn't sleep I tried to I went to bed I was like oh I'm going to bed and then, and then, and then it was like gong, 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 And even now as I closed my eyes, I just saw a vision of some like candles, like a whole bunch of them burning. Y'all in the occult and your candles. <laughs> oh, the Bible says, <coughs> sorry, that had to happen. I don't have decorum. The Bible says that, um, oh man, see the worry in Ma'a. No, the Bible doesn't say that, but uh, I just thought see the worry in Ma'a there for a minute. Creation groans to see the sons of God revealed. Whatever, do you? Creation groans to see the sons of God revealed, or the daughters of God revealed, or basically just God's people. Okay. Creation has a bone to pick with like ill spirited ridiculousness in the streets. So every so often it just pulls stunts and hurricanes and thunders and storms so we are grateful for those things now right we no longer crack and cry when it rains too hot because we know that creation gotta do it because if not creation then who you know what i mean candles are part of creation like wax you know yeah wicks and everything part of creation and then people in the occult go and grab like creation like unnecessarily like it's just it's this like phenomenon this epidemic of insanity yeah they go and they grab creation and then they use it for like darkness they make creation conduits for satanic spirits so there is this movie this horror movie that i once watched once upon a time it's called annabelle annabelle i i promise you i feel like i'm being eavesdropped on but anyway like who cares annabelle okay uh, it's this like creepy little horror movie right that's like really weird but it doesn't really matter i'm trying to gather my thoughts because i feel eavesdropped on right now but anyway let's just move on uh this annabelle movie is about a doll a d-o-double-l -L, a doll that is used for demonic purposes properly like a manufacturer went on right ahead and put together a couple of raw materials and then made a doll out of them and then some crazy human beings made a decision to grab oh by the way let me just put that out there the movie annabelle is based on a true story that is the reason why i'm even using it as an example it's like the amityville horror the amityville horror is based on a true story 
because all these horror nightmarish things actually do happen on the earth anyway moving on annabelle based on a true story family out here moving into a house kid out here be given a doll next thing they be out here hauntings anyway whatever listen so here's a manufacturer putting together a bunch of raw materials to make a doll sold a whole bunch of them likely they probably made more than one to some children in these streets and these kids are out here playing with their dolls happy until one day some grown woman or some grown man some irresponsible soul of a diabolical nature then makes a decision to walk into a kiddie's store where things are sold do you understand what i'm saying yeah uh for children's entertainment so this is supposed to make a little girl happy this is supposed to be something that a little girl is going to play with and then put it in a corner and then after the little girl is done playing with it putting it in a corner she will then go to sleep and the next day she's going to put it in a corner again until she puts it in a corner long enough for the mother to realize that oh my child has outgrown that toy and then give it away to charity and then that toy is going to now be played with by an orphan child or some other person that is a beneficiary it goes through the modes until one day maybe it ends up in a dustbin with its hands in another place its feet in another place you get my point annabelle mm, yeah manufacturer of toys but then one day instead of it being a mom of a child or a dad of a child going in to buy their daughter a toy it's some freak like some grown man or some grown woman that belongs to the kinema darkness walking into a kiddie's store and then buying an innocent toy uh, a, 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 a byproduct of creation you get my point the raw materials of the earth were harvested from the earth and then put together to make this particular toy is it plastic is it wood is it rubber it doesn't matter it's a toy made from originating creation and then some like grown voodoo priest or whatever makes a decision to purchase it this human being does not have any children so don't nobody know why you are just buying some dolls but like he's buying these dolls and then upon buying these dolls take them to his little hut wherever it is that he resides and then after taking it to his little hut where he resides he then makes a strange decision to just start chanting and grunting on top of it spewing some incantations pouring the blood of some unfortunate yet another member of creation animal on top of it and then drawing all different kinds of weird signals and signs and funny little whatever's on it and now it's no longer just a doll now it's no longer just a doll you guys now it's not a kitty's toy it's officially become a weapon of mass destruction just like that just like that you when you grab a toy and you make it a weapon of mass destruction just like that you know what they're called these weapons of mass destruction conduits what does the word conduit mean uh. i told you i don't have decorum do you have mercy when i get 5000 subscribers i'll have decorum uh, i'll i'll hold it in I'll, I'll i'll burp underneath my breath anyway whatever moving on a conduit is a transportation device that hosts stuff it hosts things it, 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 it yeah it's like a vessel thank you for an alternative thing that's what a conduit is it banks things these dolls when then they are ritualized over start becoming conduits for satanic spirits they start to become conduits for demons they become conduits for entity in other words these other worldly creatures need a body they need anything at all in order for them to effect their strange work on earth largely they don't prefer to stay in ghost form they would much rather indwell human beings pigs dogs basically animals or sometimes inanimate objects but when these objects are inanimate once they are conduits for satanic entities they are no longer inanimate they are no longer unmoving they no longer achieve the purpose for which they were made by innocent human beings just out here manufacturing a doll i'm being interrupted in the worst way dogs barking people eavesdropping like proper i can't deal but i'm gonna finish this message because it's what i'm supposed to do these entities once they enter vessels these vessels then start to have strange behavior that cannot be explained or calculated by our time and space 
by humanity and what we do on this planet of ours. So what then happens when something has been ritualized over is that it haunts. And in the movie Annabelle, well, the conduit in question was an unfortunate doll, which in and of itself was innocent until some like silly human being made a decision to just make it like, you know, a weapon of mass destruction against some innocent souls in the future that wouldn't even know that that's what's going on. Mommy, Arch, you're going to a store to just buy some doll, an antique doll, and then her whole house ends up haunted. Um, her maid ends up committing suicide. Her daughter ends up demon possessed. Like just so much chaos. And it would take a minute for them to realize that the thing that did that was the doll. The child started acting strangely after mommy bought her a doll. This here story is based on a true story allow me to explain to you who else or what else can function as a conduit for demonic spirits and so therefore do a strange thing in these streets that it was not originally supposed to do human beings are some of the biggest and baddest conduits for satanic spirits in other words demon possessed souls first price for entities was for them to enter us because you know they want us to go to hell and everything uh, and in and of themselves seeing as they are it is believed there are fallen spirits that are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim. So they had a human image, they had a human form at some point. They had arms, they had legs, they had eyes, they had noses just like us. So for those reasons, it's much better for them to operate within a body that they are most familiar with. So first price, that's us. First price because it's more comfortable to be in our bodies and operate through our bodies because we can speak comprehensively. We are audible in ways that can be comprehended. We speak languages, English, Spanish, French. Yeah. Uh, so they can cause destruction through such a vessel as that. Uh, and secondly, it is also because they just want to take us to hell. They want to take us to hell. So we're first price that these people go into, these entities go into us first as the human race. So be afraid, be very afraid as a human being. Make sure that you're born again, that you might be cleansed, that your body might not be used as a vessel of dishonorable use. It is written in God's word about entities that when you drive out devils out of a human body, they will roam around dry arid places seeking shelter or lodging or whatever find none that is suitable and then be like hey look i remember i had a body once upon a time it was lovely and i bet now it's nice and fresh and empty and then they will go back to that body and populate it with seven spirits more wicked than they over and above the original nasty batch so the solution to that is to get driven out of your body entities following which you must immediately get born again you need to fill that arid space with the holy spirit that these entities cannot come back in. So, human beings, when you don't want Jesus, please stop going to deliverance ministers to drive demons out of you. Because the human beings in question that are these deliverance ministers, some of them genuinely are filled by the Holy Spirit, and when they tell a demon to come out, it will respond and it will leave. It will be uncomfortable, and so it will get out. But if you don't get saved and everything, because you know, you are desirous of having your bread butter on both sides. You want to be free from your generational curse, but you don't want Jesus. You want to continue fornicating. You want to continue living your strange life. You want to have one foot in Jesus Christ and another foot somewhere very far away. Uh, and so for those reasons, you are trying to get cleansed of entities without actually being redeemed. The state of the human being is worse than what it was at first. If you get demons driven out of you with you wiggling around like a snake on the floor, as some man tells you, come out in the name of Jesus to your entities and they come out. According to the scriptures, if you don't get actually truly born again, they're going to roam around Johannesburg. They might even go to the US and come back, seeing as they're not restricted by time and space. And then they're just going to be like, look, okay, Lerato's body was just perfect. It was nice and cushy in there. There was like 24 hour air conditioning proper. I'm not trying to live this life. It's I'm not about that business. This year is not given. I'm not feeling being a ghost. So I just want to go inside a person. Remember Lerato, she was great. 
they will then go and check what's going on with Lerato. Lerato is now, uh, it's Sunday, it's Saturday, it's Wednesday, yeah. It's like Thursday, some strange day of the week and the deliverance session was on a Tuesday evening at the local church. It's Thursday now and Lerato is sitting watching TV and these entities are like Sheba Baria Ding. It that just doesn't even have the Holy Spirit. Like Uplomile, all like demon free. She's feeling fresh and light on her feet, thinking she's all born again. But she's obviously not saved because look, I can see dry as a desert inside there. And so these demons will be like <laughs> And then like seven other nasties are gonna come inside Lerato and the state of Lerato will be worse than it was at first. It can explain, which is why you've gone from bad to worse despite going to multiple crusades from your churches where some mighty man of God rocked up and helped you gyrate on the floor with spirits following which you vomited and then you were like, ooh, I feel better. I'm currently watching Fire Country and there is this scene in the show where it is that this one inmate firefighter is given heroin, some kind of a drug, and he gets all nasty and sleepy and is essentially just kind of tripping hard knock on this drug. His inmates don't want to expose him because that means he might find himself going back to prison instead of ending up paroling. So they cover up for him. And during the time when he's busy tripping like no man's business, everybody is in a whole bunch of danger. And then another inmate rocks up and upon dealing with this like guy that's falling apart from a heroin kick upon dealing with him he then rises again and he's cool like he feels much better and then the lead character Bodhi is like what did you give him and then this guy's like I just gave him crackers and some water and Bodhi was like but we've been giving him crackers and some water essentially what happened later on as it would be discovered in the show is that this guy gave the falling apart inmate that was tripping on heroin an upper so heroin was a downer and then this guy went and put more drugs in his system to bring him back up again that he might not get busted for taking drugs at camp at fire camp and find himself going to prison he put a drug in his system in order to take out another drug that's exactly what you guys going to all of these crusades and getting yourselves delivered by genuine men and women of god from devils that's what the equivalent of you going there without actually getting born again actually really truly getting saved that's what you're doing somebody be out you're giving you a downer and you are tripping it up a storm but to get exposed but to go to prison but to essentially just pass away yeah and then somebody rocks up and just injects you with more drugs you back up again you can run but understand you are not clean you are not cleared you are worse off than you were at first you're now nicely and freshly an addict anywho demons they leave your body you feel all good and then they come back and they give you an upper they come in with seven spirits more wicked than the original ones it can therefore explain randos that have been all up in my grill with all of your sor sorcery why it is that you've been sitting in churches for all these years and can account for days when you were totally killing it because you just came from church and you got demons cast out of you you vomited and out came a frog from your nostrils or whatever and then next thing you still nasty you still gnashing your teeth you still doing witchcraft you still gangster you still that whatever mm. the reason you remain that whatever is because you were never saved at all you got demons cast out of you but you did not get saved demons tremble in the sight of the holy spirit and when told to get out they leave so if a christian delivers you you will get delivered what's important to note however is whether or not you are saved it is therefore a very dangerous thing to do to get delivered from spirits when you are not born again the best deliverance you can ever get yourself is salvation at all and whatever it is that is inside you at the time of getting born again will highly likely just get this step in you will however have to contend with entities that were driven out of you because of your redemption but they are now hovering from without you trying to force you to continue to do their bidding by whispering sweet nothings into your ear but they're not inside you they're from without you so they're trying to influence you from outside of you you contend with them until they leave it's written in god's word that resist the devil and he will flee from you so yes no i am confirming at 
with biblical substantiation that a Christian cannot have a demon, but Christians can be demonized. In other words, from without them, they can be influenced severely by entities, especially if they're walking in some kind of compromise. And secondly, soon after getting born again, these entities that were in your generational line will try to get you to compromise, fall away. They will try to make you settle. So they will harass you from without. And like I said, whisper sweet, nothing's into your ear. Try to influence you, nudge you in a particular direction, bring certain people into your space to proliferate the thing that was going to, what is it, that was going to automatically be proliferated if you had not gotten saved and time. Long suffering, patience, and basically passing tests that God endures you through. That is what is going to make these entities eventually get out. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. In my particular case, I had certain generational curses that were all up in my grill. I did not get delivered and then saved i got saved these things had to get out from within my environment however they were from without me influencing me meaning they kept bringing the same kinds of things that were supposed to be my influences in life and what i was supposed to be the grain in just operating in it for the rest of my days they person they caused a severity of persecution around my life they try to make me capitulate they try to call me to bongoma to utwasa they tried to use the sorrow that christ had is testing me with to make me see that it was wasn't broken what I try to fix it this whole time they've been hovering around on the periphery but they've got like a due date timeline by which they have to be gone because according to the word of God if you resist all that it will flee from you so it's about writing it out for a due for for a season and then you will be set free so all of y'all out here getting stuff cast out of you without true redemption you're in danger you're in trouble of ending up worse than the first state that you were in the Bible says, test yourself to see if you're in the faith. Who knows? Lest you should fail that particular test. The best thing you can do for yourself as a human being is just get born again and then constantly strive to make your calling and election sure. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. If you live a life consistently practicing those things, you will ultimately drive out every last generational curse that's trying to pursue you from the room. In and of yourself, you are not demon possessed. You can't be indwelt by a demon as a spirit filled Christian, but they can harass you from without. So let's just put that out there. If you feel tormented by the sins of your dad or the sins of your mother, when you are a genuine Christian, you are not demon possessed. You are being harassed by entities that are testing to see if you are not going to humor them despite being Christian. They will, they, they like sitting around you. It's the difference between them being inside you and them just basically grabbing a chair and insisting on sitting next to you they're not in you they're around you and still very loud but you have now the holy spirit to put the dead the deeds of the body you have now the holy spirit to enable you to honor god's word to demolish arguments and every lofty pretension that exalts itself above the most high and hold into captivity every thought to the obedience of jesus christ so having put that out there as a first thing in my body please do everything in your power to not be a conduit for demonic spirits as a human being you are first price they would much rather be in you than an object or an animal you are first price they are going to go and grab any open canyon any vessel in these streets and run with it that is willing the moment you walk into the premises of a sangoma dream on about your spiritual autonomy one is going to come in two three ten all at the same time the moment you practice your first spell the moment yeah basically there are certain things that even though you're born with generational curses so it's kind of over before it starts when you do these things you just worsen the situation so witches stop going to church witches stop going to deliverance crusades witches stop insisting on having men and women of god lay hands on you witches if you're still practicing what you're practicing literally leave deliverance alone if you're not ready to turn to christ leave deliverance alone you are better off just standing at the bleachers watching other people getting delivered if you are not ready to down tools on your magic wand if you are not ready to down tools on your fornication all these random things that you keep on doing that you don't want to let go of if you're still all up in that just sit back and say i'll come back next year when i've made a decision for jesus because you are literally far better off left with your demons then delivered without salvation you are going to be worse off 
and worse off achieves this random insanity in my country that is South Africa. Nation that just cannot switch on the electricity, country that just cannot leave the economy growing, country that cannot leave the magic wand, the cauldron, the ancestors, country that cannot leave the knives in the hearts of women in duffel bags chopping them up waiting for strangers on the street to find them gender-based violence, a country that's fallen apart because witches went to churches and got demons cast out of them and then went back to casting spells on colleagues and now the chick is worse than she was two years ago. Tukhelang, the overseas ministers when they come here to South Africa when who is this uh who, who's this guy that likes to come that uh chauncey Crad no not chauncey Cradle. sorry i wanted to say um there is a guy that likes to come to south africa he's a deliverance minister and i think he's the real deal he's american yeah every time he ca i need clancy robert clancy every time robert clancy comes to south africa just be like hi robert from a distance and leave him alone do not insist on going to his crusades do not insist when you are not ready to drop the magic wand because that man will pray over you and he will take out that entity out of you those entities he will go back to america and these entities will roam around in these streets and then they will come right back inside but with seven spirits more wicked than they so essentially robert clancy's deliverance of you will have left you worse off making robert clancy at your looking look, look like a charlatan when he's not do a better thing just get born again at all if you get born again, you highly likely won't even need Robert Clancy. Why? Because over time, God is going to ward off through the Holy Spirit all that darkness all up in your family line in you. It's just going to automatically flee from you. Flee from you. So I would go so far as to argue that... I would go so far as to argue that deliverance ministers should probably not even offer the, the service of casting out demons to people they cannot verify are genuinely trying to get saved. Like if people are coming, they're all lost and everything and are prepared to embrace the Holy Spirit the moment they get delivered. Unless they can validate that, verify it, like off the cuff, they should basically make like doctors do no harm. Just don't deliver them. Leave them. Don't pride yourself in getting all the numbers of people that are like wiggling around on the floor, manifesting demons. Do not pride yourself in an entire church. I, I find it frankly um, irresponsible to have entire crusades by deliverance ministers where they cannot give one-on-one -on -one attention to people being delivered. And it's just a whole chunky packed church full of people manifesting some of these things are charlatan activities they're not the real deal but in other events it's actual manifestations of entities and I, I find it irresponsible to do that because you can't get to everyone they're gonna go home after some entities in them got irritated or maybe even cast out because they could not stand the climate of the holy spirit and then go right back into those people's bodies I, I don't even know what in the world how how to do this in the 21st century i just i don't i i thoroughly do not know because if you think about the ministry of jesus christ and the disciples they cast out demons but if you think about christ the accounts of christ casting out demons often these entities would walk to him in i guess the form of the body that was this person that was demon possessed and then start having a conversation with the son of man what do you want with us don't take us to that place what what business do we have with you and then he would cast them out the one boy was thrown on the floor with an epileptic fit because of the presence of jesus it was a one-on-one -on -one occasion a one-on-one -on -one event that's what's good but whenever like the crowds that were encircling jesus nothing is written in the scriptures about them as people who were manifesting no they were not manifesting they were desperate for his power the one woman rocked up and touched these garments and power left christ and then her infirmity left her and god said woman your faith has healed you but the lord dealt with each individual case on a case-by-case -case basis and that's how christians also ought be cannot have like a whole big chunky crusade or a revival meeting where a whole bunch of people are manifesting and there aren't enough one-on-one -on -one interactions with them by christians who are going to ascertain that these people are going to stay good so i believe that some of the insults to the injury of demonic possession on the earth is added by these crusades because genuinely spirit-filled people are casting out demons in people that are going home to continue with their debauched lives and so they're becoming worse and worse people are spiritually irresponsible with other people i think i believe i thoroughly imagine that's what that what needs to happen frankly i'm, I'm wary myself of deliverance ministers for those reasons because i just feel as if though it is dangerous 
to do this job if you cannot function much like a doctor a doctor like a general practitioner even in a village packed with people you have got to see one patient at a time you cannot just ubiquitously diagnose all of them in one sitting by feeding them with like a a bound together teaspoon tray the same cough mixture and just down it there put it down push it down their throat because you imagine that they're all gonna be okay you can't just like sweepishly just deal with all of them in one batch christ did not do that jesus did not do that you guys the holy spirit when he indwells a person does the deliverance automatically i believe that so what should be getting done is evangelizing people unto redemption and the rest will follow suit if they get filled by the holy spirit at born again date they will self-deliver over time in being biblical christians in resisting the devil he will flee from them in being holy for he is holy being set apart in working out their own salvation with fear and trembling in avoiding sin in repenting in consecrating themselves to god in praying and fasting over the years certain trends in their families will just fall off them in particular because god has delivered them so what's important is to evangelize what's important is to get people born again more than delivering a whole batch of you kind like proper a doctor a physician can not no matter how much people need him him being just one man or him be, her being just one woman they he or she cannot successfully award medical attention to people if she thinks that if she wants or he wants to deal with them in a batch you you can't they have symptoms that are different all of them you have to focus on each individual patient diagnose them and then award them a prescription where it is that you will send them away to take this medication and heal apart from the doctor looking at them so you have to not only diagnose their issue you also have got to give them advice as to how to live in the future get them saved they get delivered you explain to them what are the risks before they even undergo deliverance of deliverance absent of the holy spirit you tell them you could end up worse off if you don't actually give your life to jesus christ you put terms and conditions out there you make them sign a disclaimer literally if they insist on getting delivered you have to tell them in the absence of you actually truly giving your life to christ you're going to be worse off than the state that you presently are today do you agree sign on the dotted line the same way that you experienced a doctor's visit you basically get that consultation at your own risk the doctor is absolved from responsibility upon treating you insofar as you sign on the dotted line that you are happy to be treated by this man or this woman so that's how deliverance ministers ought to be too do you understand that according to the bible you could end up worse off if i take these demons out of you explain to them that if you just get born again at all you likely will get delivered from whatever is plaguing your life anyway and over some months you will notice an improvement over years you will notice that you will get better and better as you get sanctified it is the easier way it is softer it is lighter and it is less theatrical than you rolling around on the floor with spirits you could just get saved and go home and live a christian life here is a dossier that i'm giving to you on basic instructions before leaving earth notes attached as an appendix to the bible seeing as i have taken it in my own personal um capacity to explain the bible exposit it on your behalf so here's a dossier here take it go home give them instructions that's that's the prescription they can then make a decision upon being given the prescription to go to the chemist and actually take the prescription and take the medication or they can just ignore the dossier but it's better for you to just let them know off the cuff what to expect and if they still insist on just getting delivered having spirits driven out of them without actually being born again like they're not even trying to see if they can't have a relationship with god at all if they insist that please cut these cast these things out of me i want to be set free then by all means go on right ahead and drive them out in the name of jesus but continue to just let them know that at your own risk enter at your own risk there is an easier softer way to get delivered just get born again and over time funny stuff will flee from you it's easier it's softer the more theatrical approach is risky because it might mean casting out of entities of a body of a human being that is recalcitrant against god and will inevitably go back to the drawing board of their darkness it's just easier it's safer but you know the christian um certain circles within our faith are you know they're not they're not <laughs> practicing their physician jobs because that's exactly what they are they're like doctors with responsibility they're not because it's spiritual it's also um to a certain extent unregulated and so it's kind of dangerous in whatever we are adding insult to our own injuries but all of these people walking around as conduits to demonic spirits 
otherwise known as demon possessed human beings are responsible for making conduits out of every else they're responsible for making conduits out of everything else in creation so just as god says in his word creation groans to see the sons of god revealed so too shall i reiterate creation is groaning to see us revealed because creation is being subjugated to the tyranny of human insanity by people who are demon possessed now trying to put demons in a hairbrush demons in a keypad demons in a makeshift fan demons in a pillow demons in a i could go on there is no end as to what it is that people can use for satanic purposes where it is that people can fuel satanic funny little woza woza and stuff people are evil they're nefarious they're diabolical they don't know whether they're coming or going the bible says the human heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked there's no end to what it is that we can do in these streets and so therefore we gotta watch our own hearts Hearts. but people don't know that they gotta watch their own hearts because they think they're born inherently good unless of course they're born again unless of course they're biblically voracious and so they get that they, they leave a lot to be desired but it is kind of pointless when the only people that know that they leave a lot to be desired are the ones that are a few in number and are the ones that are already born again we are trying to get that same message understood by those that don't know that they leave a lot to be desired they think that they're inherently good and the ones that have now been given a supernatural goodness by the holy spirit know that apart from him they can do nothing good they know now they have found out but they have a hard time convincing other people that that's what needs to happen because other people still think they're inherently great okay those are the issues that we have so now we then experience this phenomenon that is annabelle a whole unfortunate member of creation a whole unfortunate creature a created thing it is a byproduct of created things it is a, a secondary created thing god created the original raw materials that then human beings harvested from the earth and made other things so a doll is also a member of creation because it comes from creation it's been made by things on the earth yeah and then people go and grab plastic you know fabric like fibers of plastic of hair of nylon or whatever and then they make it do things that are scary in human beings when we are conduits for demonic spirits we manifest in ways that i guess you could see in movies like the exorcism of emily rose that also is based on a true story okay we deal with those kinds of extremities of manifestations of demons or just a flat out mean disposition just walking around sabotaging colleagues just having no good interest in serving the needs of your own children as a parent just yeah these are other ways in which people can manifest um demonic entities but then how do things manifest instead of subjects how do objects manifest in ways that even those very insane insensitive human beings that don't care about our unfortunate planet can't take themselves in ways that even they can't take in their stride like the way that conduits that are inanimate manifest demons is unacceptable to even the demon possessed devil worshiper you are making essentially long story short your whole planet haunt you make things haunt if at all they're natural state is to be stationary when put down on a table they will do anything but they will move without anybody moving them there's no wind there's no earthquake and there certainly is no human being lifting a hairbrush but they're moving i believe electricity has returned i believe electricity this country i need to go and switch on the giza ain't nobody out just trying to take no cold shower i'll be back what's up i'm back i've used the bathroom yes and there's electricity yes uh okay we have solar panels but the giza operates guy is gone so otherwise i shower come easy about dang that's what that's about just in case you were curious if not really you don't have to be curious what you ought to be curious about is jesus because that's the only thing that matters on the planet i promise you nothing else matters <sighs> okay uh, i'm going to be doing edits in the background while i continue to talk so have mercy on me anyway last time i ended was speaking about how it is that when entities have indwelt or have made a conduit out of an object the end result is a haunting the end result is a haunting the end result is essentially what would be the tantamount of poltergeist activity cupboards 
opening like if you're gonna do a satanic ritual in a house you make your house a conduit for satanic spirits this ought to demotivate a whole bunch of practicing witches from their own households there's this one woman whose testimony i was listening to i don't even believe she's actually saved just based on her testimony uh it, it, it sounds made up and there is no veracity just in terms of biblical back up ability to what she was saying uh, there's nothing that that suggests that she's christian that's what i'm trying to explain uh she's just sounded like one of those charlatans that joined christianity because it was lucrative or whatever she saw that there's money to be made in claiming that you used to belong to the kingdom of darkness anyway whatever this human individual spoke about how it is that her house her child her she has a, she had a new baby a brand spanking new human being in the world and in the baby's bedroom she and her husband when the baby started crying ran there and there was like a whole black hawk in the baby's bedroom in that could not have flown in through a window because of burglar proofing on the window that was too narrow for that big bird to be able to get in like a whole giant hawk black one that just flew and not flew it was situated stationary located in the bedroom of the baby over the crib or something and she and her husband were freaking out they were scared and she immediately just started breaking out into tongues um that's not the thing that made me write her off as a, a, a likely unsaved person at all claiming big chunky things the thing it was her whole testimony and i'm not about to go and explain it to you to explain why i feel this way about her if you knew who she was maybe i might go into it but right now we're speaking about a total stranger you don't even know so ain't no need for me to get into a apologetics with that okay this human individual this female ish one minute spoke hey 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 we're not doing this i have a cat she spoke about how it is that there was a, a whole giant hawk in her house right and she felt like the occult centered over in and of herself this woman was a member of the occult she was a sangoma she claims to have repented from the kingdom of darkness she was a sangoma before she came to christ i literally don't believe that she's in christ now but anyway that's another story for another day she came to christ and then of course stopped doing stuff but prior to her getting born again and everything born again i can't confirm it she just she was sketchy okay she was a practicing sangoma and every so often she would have consultations in her house uh her clients would come to her montru, montru, montru. yeah that's what's good and so uh that activity that manifestation of that big bird that black bird over the baby's crib or whatever is the kind of stuff that you would see with your own two eyes while nobody else sees it when you practice darkness you subjugate yourself to the tyranny of nightmares i have family members testimonies as i've heard anyway that are bombarded by nightmares almost every night because of their involvement in the occult but they don't accrue it to their involvement in the occult they accrue it to just i ate bad food or i i don't know like i'm having ptsd i don't know what 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 under heaven yo before i came to christ i was not bombarded by nightmares and random funny weird dreams i only started getting random funny weird dreams that would trouble me well into the night when i became a christian and so became a conduit for the holy spirit meaning that he deposits understanding in my mind about what's going on in the kingdom of darkness so because i have a prophetic gifting to see such things every so often i see some pretty nightmarish stuff it is however sealed by the love of the holy spirit people in the occult are like ones who put themselves in a spiritual hunger games arena without any body coming for them to rescue them from the things that go bump in the night that you can possibly see it is important for us to see things that go bump in the night as christians because we are the light in a dark world and we expose it and the darkness comprehended it not the darkness does not comprehend the light that we bring so we drive our darkness in order to drive it out we got to see it sometimes not every one of us sees but those of us who do know the burden of having the gift of a seer because sometimes we see some pretty dingy stuff i personally petitioned god not to see things physically like i don't want to see it like even in my dreams i do not see gruesome menacing creatures i see people and i see animals i see lions i see crocodiles a lot 
I see things that I can account to nature, time, space. Essentially that which you see, if you see it in a magazine, you're not going to be like, Yin Lena. it's not the kind of stuff drawn in Disney magic shows. Yeah, I don't see magical creatures. Neither do I see unseemly creatures like aliens, things with four eyes, seven hands. I don't see stuff like that. Not even in my dreams. I see that which I can possibly see in waking space. That's the benefit of having never dabbled, dabbled in the occult and seen some spectacularly menacing things. In waking space, as a, a living walking human, I don't see Jack. In waking space, I don't see Jack. Like nature just stays nature. Nature does what nature usually does in the sight and presence of people who don't dabble with super nature apart from Jesus. I don't have sightings of funny things in Gipapamijan. I don't but people get mean to me they manifest things inside them that are nasty people act weird in ways however that are explainable by time and space those are the benefits of not dabbling with witchcraft you don't get to see more than what you absolutely need to see sometimes not even in dreams how it is that god shows me a really evil entity i don't see horns i don't see red skin i don't see scales i see a lion and it is chasing after me and it's very scary. It's scary, it's a wild animal, it's ferocious, it's ravenous, and it's chasing after me. It's scary, but it's a lion and I know that it's this creature that exists out there somewhere in the wilderness in my country. I have seen crocodiles, uh, crocodiles and lions are especially poignant in my dreams, just popping out of bushes, it's standing in front of me and I'd be like scared. Cause in waking life, if a crocodile were to jump out of a bush and stand in front of me, I would scream, I would be sad, I'd be broken. I'd be devastated, I'd be frightened, I might faint, I might feel like my life is over. I would act like that thoroughly in waking life, but I don't know what I would do if I were to see a creature with 10 eyes, if I were to see a creature with 20 hands and feet, if I were to see scales and if I were to see slime on a body, I don't know what I'd do. I, I seriously thoroughly do not know for the life of me what I would do. Now that we have put that out there, uh, let's just uh, one minute. Okay, now that we've put that out there. So basically, uh, random sightings, physical sightings of things. You actually touching something and you can pierce your hand into it. You can, you know, leave a dent. You can leave a bruise on it. When when you are sighting such things as, as those in your physical waking space that are from the spirit realm you're not a regular human being you there's something you've done there's something you've touched there's something you've effect so essentially that woman the reason why that hawk that whole black chunky living breathing hawk that was seen even by her husband over the baby's crib was as a result of satanic activity that happened in that house when you make objects conduits for demonic spirits stuff like that happens you see aberrations you see ghosts you see entities you see animals in your hallway at night you see pinky pinky you get my point you get hauntings all these urban legends stories all over of people talking about how it is that it, it, that, that they, they used to live in this one house and from living in that one house they, for the life of them they they could not deal because they had to they were always just afflicted by by just these sightings sightings when people dabble with entities in an environment they make that environment haunt they make that when you practice sorcery in your own house it will eventually haunt so you you literally call on yourselves men and women of a diabolical disposition you call on yourselves disquiet in your own households and the unfortunate thing is that these hauntings are not restricted they're not limited to being cited by the irresponsible person in question. They are not cited only by Usatani Wakona, Umnom Tagati. They're not cited by Morolong Wading. This little witch is not the only person that is subjugated to the tyranny of seeing those things. Like in the case of the woman from the testimony on YouTube, both her and her husband saw the hawk. The baby was crying. I, I don't know if the baby saw as well what it is that they saw and that's why it was crying but it certainly was able to feel a presence in that environment that's what the, the, the baby basically experienced at that particular juncture and both she and her husband even though her husband was not the sangoma it was her that was the sangoma this thing was sighted in their house by Wongumundu that had eyes to see everybody that had eyes to see saw it everybody in that space was therefore subjugated to the cruelty of one irresponsible person that is into opening little portals in their house
rules, subjugating therefore everyone that lives in that space to the tyranny of citing things that ought not be in our realm. They should not be in our space. They should not be hovering over our skies. They should stay in the second heaven. They should stay where it is that God cast them out to roam in after they fell from heaven, from their first estate. It is us that invite them in. If you think about Satan, indeed the Bible always helps to explain everything that we speak. It can be backed up with scripture. If you think about the devil in tempting Eve and Adam, well, Eve first. Yeah. How did he manifest? Did he rock up as a scaly being? Did he rock up as a red horned, tailed, sharp horned, sharp tailed rando? No. He came as a snake. It was basically an animal that Adam and Eve knew. It was a, a living creature that Adam and Eve were able to be like, ah, oh, this is what this is. He could not. He made an, a conduit out of a snake, entered it, and then did his thing in Eve. However, once Eve humored Usatani in that regard, the devil now could manifest all manner and kinds of scary things that go bump in the night. Scary, scary things that go bump in the night on our precious earth the earth of which god gave to us to fill it occupy it multiply do a better thing and yet we're not doing a better thing we're doing a strange ominous creepy little thing we are doing a thing that ought not be done and in not doing better by ourselves nobody can come up for air the body of christ we are inundated there's way more of them than there are of us and the cases just keep on multiplying all over the show of all of this demonic manifestation and imagine the time is gonna come when there's so much of it just flying around here in these streets that god now has got to essentially reap his bride and judge the world so he can do cleanup so he can do cleanup so he can close the portals mankind this earth was given us to have dominion over it and when we dabble with darkness we award the devil an opportunity to dilly dally dance do whatever he wants to do so when you bewitch stuff you are uh, you beg you literally grovel and moan and beg for a haunting you ask for your house to no longer be habitable and a lot of y'all practice you practice in your own backyards y'all know how it is in the rural areas where they practice all of this wickedness you know how it is that the streets ain't safe especially at night there's always these sightings there are ghosts in corners lurking lurking and some places are more concentrated with the darkness than others some places are more concentrated with the darkness than others meaning that it was a hot spot for rituals that environment cemeteries are feared by people yes because they host dead people and people inherently fear death it's an it's a mistake serious thing that's not understood by most because a lot of people don't know what happens when we die given ignorance uh, that the lord is telling everybody get out from that ignorance know where you're going when you die but most people do not know so they, they they're scared of cemeteries etc and death is a it brings all this foreboding in any environment where it is that it, it comes uh, there's so much sorrow so much foreboding and so much mystery to it that's why people are scared of cemeteries but people are also scared of cemeteries because of the amount of haunted haunted activity that goes on at cemeteries no not because people are dead and coming back to ghostly haunt everybody but because occult practitioners are mightily obsessed with doing rituals at burial sites they are obsessed with doing rituals at cemeteries and these rituals are what cause hauntings at the cemeteries and not so much the dead people in the ground it is entities that are uh, uh, invited in to our plane that then play around literally in dead regions in places where the dead rest where they lay in the ground at night yeah entities hop up and down jumping on the spot like kangaroos in that ecosystem precisely because people will automatically imagine that the dead are haunting instead of people realizing that entities are intimidating the human race that's what's going on occult practitioners love mortuaries they love dead bodies they love cemeteries they love all things dead it's written in god's word that those that don't love christ love death and these people adore death to a point where they pursue it all the way to its resting place cemeteries they can't leave graves alone so they become hot spots for hauntings but like i said there are some regions that are worse than others some places some homes houses that are worse than others if, if there is a haunted house a haunted mansion a haunted street corner chances are something happened in that environment that was exceptionally diabolical not all murders result in 
in a haunting in a house but some do why because the reason why the person killed was due to a satanic ritual they were involved in something very dark and as a result they were then spurned or charged to murder therefore those entities lodge there they need opportunity they need uh, um, allowance permission to come into our realm and do a strange thing they cannot just do what they want to do they have got to be awarded an opportunity to slither into our spaces so occult practitioners i can't say this enough do you really want to live in a haunted planet do you want to live in a haunted house you practice in your own homes next thing you're getting nightmares ah guys my nightmares are different from your nightmares do you want to know why because my nightmares show me what you're doing with darkness because the lord will reveal that which is being done in the dark places into in the marvelous light he will show our, he will highlight basically on a mountaintop that which is being done in secret clandestine activity must be shown to the body of christ so that's the only reason i get nightmares i get shown what you do in your dingy corners Y'all, however, are not so much pursued by visions and prophecies that are scary to see. Even Job said in the word of God, as he was going through his trials, that you scare me at night. You frighten me busiho, with prophecies. You tell me what's going to happen, that I might get my act together. The righteous are awarded visions and prophecies in their sleep that they might, one, be repent. Secondly, expose, reproof. And thirdly, prophesy. Do you understand? The wicked, however, are tormented by evil spirits. And so it's a very different space that. It's a very different environment. When you are being strangled at night as you sleep, or when every time you lay down, you get a repeat nightmare, blah, blah, all that jazz. And it's due to the fact that you're involved in something dark. You brought it onto yourself. There is a, 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 a covering or protection that is awarded. Seers that see things that go bump in the night as they are called by God, but there is no protection awarded. People who ha who made themselves see because they dared imagine they can play with dark arts and be left alone by the devil. By Lord, do you understand? They get horrible nightmares. Some of them see things as when they go to the bathroom at night with the lights switched off, they see a kid in the passage. They see an animal crouching at, 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 in the passage or when they wake up in the middle of the night, they see some funny little thing just at the corner of their bed at the foot of their bed and when they switch on the light it's gone it's not there that's what people who dabble with the occult subjugate themselves to they're always scared sometimes they sleep with lights on at night they don't know whether they're coming or going but they did this to themselves they brought dark entities into their lives into their ecosystems into their environments and now they are tormented and when they get given counsel by the body of christ to repent do better they give us attitude or worse even though they want to do better their entities are just blocking them from doing such a thing as that so whenever you meet with a haunted mansion from long and long and long ago, only do the research in that environment and you will find out that there was an irresponsible batch of witches always doing seances in the basement. There is always a backstory. There is always a backstory. If you go to a house in the center of suburbia, it's right here in an urban area and there's funny little activity reported there. If you do a backstory, you will find out that the mom there to make some money was Aja doing tarot card readings. She was Aja doing psychic um, uh, readings in her house. She made herself a medium. She is always playing with, with the Ouija board or this. You will, whenever there is a haunting, there is a backstory. Some places you can't get the backstory because it happened that long ago. But that region, that area, that funny little hotspot for funny little activity that happens, that place that people say avoided, especially from 7 p.m. at night, there is a backstory. And the backstory is largely, likely, highly, 100%, I would go so far as to say that of the time linked to some occult ritual. Because it's occult rituals, occult magic piercing into the third into the second heavens that brings these things in and then makes inanimate objects fly off your kitchen counter with nobody moving them and with there being no wind it's the kind of stuff that makes a whole chunky heavy sofa that is sub like just grounded by gravity just move from one part of the lounge to another it's dabbling with witchcraft that makes your cupboards fly open with poltergeist activity at night and then close again look at the human being look at people look at people people did that human beings are the ones that bring these entities into our environments they did not bring themselves there they did not they, nah satan did not just he can't he has rules demons know god and they tremble they cannot just do what they want they can't just come and s decide to have dinner with you human beings are the ones that invite them in and witches are the ones that invite them in 
People who practice occult magic are inviting these things in. So why do you think in 2024 there are so many sightings of aliens all over the world? Let's move to the next part.